Hi, today we're here to talk about self-defense. In this program, when we mention the word self-defense, we're labeling it as you were unaware and taken and caught off guard and somebody got you in one of the thousand different attacks that could happen. It could be a front choke, rear choke, uh, rear naked choke, headlock, uh, they could grab your wrist, pin you up against a wall, and we can go on and on and on. As your Wing Chun skills progress, you'll be, and you're aware, you'll be able to stop these attacks before they get to you. So if somebody was coming with a punch, you would be, or to choke you, you would simply be able to stop it before they got to the actual choke. If you're aware of your surroundings and aware of what's going on around you, then you can avoid most of these self-defense situations because you'd see it coming and you could move and get out of the way. So when we talk about self-defense, or if I ask anybody if you have a self-defense question, I'm um, bringing it to that point of, yes, how do I escape a choke? How do I get out of a wrist lock, et cetera? What we're gonna do is we're gonna apply Wing Chun concepts and principles to our self-defense techniques to make them work for everybody. All techniques should not rely on size and strength. They should work effortlessly because we're always assuming your attacker is gonna be bigger, stronger weapons and friends. So brute strength moves just will never work. What is self-defense? Here, self-defense is not fighting. And I know a lot of people, what do you mean? I thought that's what it is all about, fighting. Nope, self-defense is about escaping with your life. If you think about any loved one, anybody you care about, would you want them in a situation where they were attacked to escape with their life or stick around and try to fight? You'd want them to get out of there. So as your skill level progresses, you can choose to stick around and fight if you wish, but from these attacks or these self-defense techniques we're learning and escapes, it's about escaping, getting out of there as fast as possible. Now, when we talk about sticking around, you know, really good things don't happen if you choose to stick around. Uh, they could wind up pulling out a weapon, friends could show up, the police show up, all sorts of things can happen and none of them are really good. So get out of there as quick as possible, escape with your life. That's what it's about, escaping with your life. So what we're talking about is escaping with your life. We're not talking about showing off, it's about escaping. And we're not talking about running away from a fight. We're talking about ending something as quick as possible, disabling somebody, and then running away safely. Okay, so this is the key everybody should understand about self-defense. We're gonna talk about doing the simplest moves within the realm of our safety. We're gonna talk about assessing the actual threat. We're gonna use techniques that don't rely on size and strength. And we're gonna understand self-defense concepts and principles such as awareness. You should be aware of your surroundings at all times. I would say, I don't want to throw out statistics because statistics change, but most self-defense situations can be avoided by simply being aware of your surroundings, being aware of what's coming, being aware of what's behind you. And I'm not saying you have to walk around all day, every day uh, on high alert. But you see people all the time walking through a parking lot at night on their phone and they're doing texting and they're not looking. That's not being aware. That's a victim. That's somebody, if I was an attacker, I'm going for the person that's unaware versus the person with a key in their hand looking around or somebody that seems like they're more aware of what's happening. There is so much to discuss when we talk about awareness that I'm going to get into this more detail and show tons of scenarios uh, because this could be a class in its own. is understanding where the actual imminent danger is, where the true threat is. Um, Chris, could I borrow you for one minute? Every self-defense situation, it, the first thing we're gonna do in, in that situation is assess where is the real danger. So if, uh, let me bring you right here real quick. If he grabs my hand here, so let's go this way here. So grab with this hand. If he grabs my hand here and he's got my hand, uh, many people think, oh, this is the danger, and they start pulling and pulling and pulling, and they're, which is fighting force against force. If he's stronger, this is a rope in a game of tug of war, I'll probably lose. But they think this is the real danger, and they start fighting this. That's the real danger now. Make a fist here. Here, he's got this up, 
this has now become the real danger, not this. He might be squeezing my hand so hard it's turning black and blue, but this can end me, so I need to assess the real danger. If he's choking me here and he's got my throat, I need to assess the, him cutting off my air is now the danger and I need to get rid of this immediately. So it's about assessing the danger right away, understanding where the danger is and then understanding we wanna move away from the danger. If he has me with this hand here and this hand comes up, I'm certainly not stepping you know, in towards the danger. If I do anything where I come over here, then that hand can really take me out. So I know that's the danger, so we're gonna do stuff where we get away from the danger hand the next day, that, that situation. So he had me here, his hand came up, I understood that was the danger, and I move away from the danger, okay? So that's assessing the threat, assessing the imminent danger that you're in. Remember, we always assume they're bigger and stronger. So we already are, in all our Wing Chun concepts, doing everything with economy of movement, economy of energy, simplicity, not fighting force against force. And these techniques are extreme, and concepts and principles are extremely important to understand. We've talked a little bit about not fighting force against force, and I just wanna talk a little bit about simplest thing within the realm of your safety. Although, and this will come not just from self-defense, but in all of our Kung Fu. He, I, he came and he choked me. Instead of doing a move, a move, a move, a wrist grab, a hit, I just went right for his eyes. How simple is that, okay? Very simple. Um, if he was to throw a punch, I could do a spinning back flip kick to his head. Not so simple, I give up my back. But if he throws a punch, throw the punch real quick and I just come right in, boom, and I hit him, nice, simple, direct attack. Simplest move within the realm of your safety. Another thing as we get into, we're gonna have backup plans because things don't always work as you want them to. So a good example is he comes and chokes me here and maybe I went to go get his eyes and he went back and I, and I, I missed here. You know, then we can go up here, we have something else we can do. He's got me here, I can come here and, and do all sorts of other things too. So we have fail safes. If one doesn't work, you just flow on to the next. And it makes it very simple. We're also gonna start with something called instant reaction. Meaning it doesn't matter if you've been studying Kung Fu for 20 years or studying it for the past 10 minutes. This will work for you tonight. We're gonna start with every self-defense technique, at least that we can. Chokes from behind might be a little bit different, but something that's an instant reaction, meaning he comes to choke, boom, immediately into the eyes. He comes to grab my hand, boom, immediately come in and hit. Instant, 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 they work effortlessly. They're, it's immediate, they're not fancy, they're effective. And then we'll start learning from here, choke, escapes that work also effortlessly here as we go through their very effective, simple escapes. When we talk about self-defense, there's also three major categories we're gonna break self-defense into. That is UAM, an unarmed attacker, an armed attacker, and multiple opponents. These are the three different kind of general scenarios that we break self-defense into, and we do this for a particular reason. You would handle each one of those situations slightly different. Even though you're utilizing Wing Chun concepts and principles for each, every situation has to be handled a little bit different. An unarmed versus an armed versus multiple. And at some point, we'll really get into all three of those in detail so you understand the reasoning behind each.